Good morning and welcome to another episode of Fishing with Steve. So we're back on the bank again. It's been a long week. What a week it's been. Um, since I've been out, it's the fourth week in a row I've been able to get out onto the bank and it's uh, it's great. It's a great feeling. Um, last week when I, when I finished on that blank session that I had, I uh, went home, had a bit of a head cold, what I thought was a head cold. Um, I thought it was because I got caught out in the rain on the last session where I'm packing up. Um, but did a COVID test and ended up being COVID. So, uh, yeah, spent the last week uh, testing positive for COVID. It was just a bit, a bit of a head cold, but other than that, it was grand. But um, had to isolate and only started kind of testing negative on Friday evening. So we're able to get out here uh, today and get some fishing done over the weekend, which is great because all week my head has been done in um, we're back on the lake that I did call to on the last session and it was flooded. Now it's still flooded but it has dropped about six inches which has allowed me to, to set up on this main platform that's just off the car park. So it's just gone 10 to 8. I uh, got the baits out for about 10 past 7 and we've already had a run. Give a run here. <sighs> Struck too early on that one. He had hold of it just at the top. <sighs> oh. Oh, hopefully, he didn't feel any. Uh, didn't feel any hooks of it. Look at that. Um, there's a serious amount of bait fish just literally right in front of me. So I just got the, the deeper and the bait bought out for a quick survey and it starts off at about six foot just here in front of me at the uh, platform and then drops off at probably about 20 wraps out. Um, you're at 17 foot and then just comes up in a gradual slope right away up to six. So you're going from six to, to 17. There's no real kind of edge drop off so it's kind of a nice nice um slope um which which will allow great for the baits just to lie on the bottom and the line to run back up the top of them so the run i did get was on the left hand rod that's in about 10 foot of water and um, that is off kind of again there's a side of a, a slight drop off so i'm just fishing the edge of that drop off both rods are out on smelt at the moment and that's what i got the run on was on smelt it's it's one of the baits i just like so i, I kind of tend to always start off on smelt and then i'll move around the baits but i do have some mackerel and some sardines, some herring, um, smelt as I said, and I do even have a couple of trout there as well. Yeah, so hopefully we might get a couple of more runs and I haven't just blown the, the only run I'm gonna get today. I have fished this lake before, but it was about 20 years ago. Um, a lot of work has been done around it. Um, there's walkways and stuff after being put in around it. And there's a little coffee dock just after being set up over here as well in the car park. So um, hopefully that coffee dock opens today because I forgot my cooker and I could do with a coffee. Now we've got a run. We're in this time. Yes. Finally we're in. Feels like a decent fish. This is on roach. Oh, I think I dropped it. Oh, lads. <sighs> dropped it again.
the bad luck streak continues. <laughs> I was going to use this lake as a bit of redemption to get some, uh, to actually catch some pike. But um, I've had three runs and I uh, forced two, missed, there was nothing there. Third time, I let it run with the bait a bit more and hooked into it. Played it for a couple of minutes, felt like a very good fish and then dropped it. I'm absolutely good at it. Um, I switched both rods over onto Roach. With that pike, it was in the area. I don't think it felt the hooks the first time and I dropped it, must have dropped it back onto its head because it took it within a couple of minutes of it being dropped out there. Um, two very quick runs on the Roach. They're very large Roach that I'm using and I have them pumped full of that fish and crayfish oil. Absolutely no, so I can't believe it. I just, I don't know what's happening. Just the last few weeks has just been absolutely brutal. <laughs> I've been brutal. Um, there were three, well the last two anyway, were very good runs. Definitely was Neil, it was very, definitely Pike. And then hit into that last one and I just can't believe I dropped it. All I can say is hopefully we might get another couple of runs and it seemed the roach was uh, taken straight away so um, I think I'm going to leave it on them for the minute because I put it out, it was literally only a couple of minutes and I got a run and it was in the same area that I'd had smelt and mackerel on and I hadn't had a touch of the smelt and mackerel well since this morning anyway. So uh, yeah, I think I'm going to leave the roach on and see if we, uh, see if we get any more runs from them. Had a few kayakers around as well. A guy here does uh, renting out some kayaks. You now they've, they've, they haven't stopped me fishing in any way. They've gone up to the far end of the lake. And uh, But uh, yeah, it's nice to see a busy lake. It's uh, busy all the way around. Right, let's go catch some pike, come on. I hadn't had a tap all day on the right hand rod, so I decided to put the bait boat and the deeper back out to do a quick survey and I noticed that most of the bait fish were holding between 6 and 8 foot. So I decided to go with a float rod. I reeled in the right hand rod. Stuck on a float. It was just out of casting range so I used the bait boat to uh, drop the float out. The float drifted for about an hour from right to left across the swim. And I didn't get a tap. But little did I know how close I was to catching an absolute monster. So I had fitted the Waterwolf underwater camera to the float rig and only after about four minutes you see an extremely large pike coming in into the swim and swimming around the bait. Put it on the source perspective, the bait that I have on is a probably four inch piece, half piece of mackerel. Uh, you can see here in the boat when it was going out, fairly large bait. And that kind of puts you in perspective of how large the pike was that came in to inspect it. When the camera swings around, you can see that it's only our head that's fitting into frame. She comes in from the bottom of the screen not just the bait a couple of times, but then ultimately decides, no, I'm not having it, and swims off. And from experience, I believe that she's probably a very high double. You can compare the size to a small jack that swims past a couple of minutes later, where the whole bike fits in frame. So it was a close hunt, but it just wasn't to be. She didn't take it. That's quarter four. Sun's going down. I still haven't had a pike. Um, haven't done since I lost that that big one. That was at around one o'clock, I think. It's just been an absolute nightmare. <laughs> I just can't. I don't know. I'm just. I'm just. Uh, I'm just hoping that I'm going to pick one up last knockings. Just as it gets dark, hopefully, I might get a couple of runs. Yeah, it's been nice being back here. I, said, I haven't fished this place in about 20 years. Um, but it is really, really busy. Now, I know I'm on the main stand here that's right beside the car park. 
Um, there's more secluded spots further on down and around the bend, and then there's more down this side as well on the on on this side of the things. But they're all underwater. Every single platform is underwater. And I was talking to the guy, uh, Tony, who was doing the kayak in there, and he was telling me that this platform was underwater until yesterday. So between yesterday and today, he said this lake has dropped about six inches. So anyway, it allowed me to get on the bank today. It allowed me to get the get the rods out from here. But ideally, I'd like to fish around that bend, around the corner. That's where I used to fish years ago. I never used to fish off this platform. We definitely have something like this. Hammer in. Doesn't feel that big, but it's a fish. It's only a jack. But you know what? It'll do. Literally just dropped out a piece of smelt. I hadn't even brought the boat back in yet. And I got taken. Oh, am I happy with that? Look at the net. Oh. A tiny jack, but you know what? Get in the net, get in. <laughs> oh, it's only just hooked as well. Come here, hold on, hold on, chill out, chill out. Now. Let's take off this. Thank you so much. <laughs> yes. Oh my God, so happy to catch such a small fish. Well, let's guess what? I didn't blank. <laughs> oh my God, another two pound or two, two and a half pound. Um, but the most welcome pike I've caught in a long, long time. Um, we're just lo we're losing the light fairly fast. It's just coming up to five o'clock. You we'll probably have about another 20, 20 minutes or so of light. But yeah, this the most welcome pike ever. Two pounder, another one. So that's two two pounders in the last month. But uh, yeah, so in total today we've 
had four runs, dropped three of them, and uh, caught that last little small one. But listen, I'm so happy. Can't believe I'm that happy about that small of a pike. Well, guys, another session done and dusted. A bit more of a pleasant pack up than it was on the last session. Um, no rain this time. It was actually a nice evening. But uh, yeah, broke the blank. No blank today. Um, but only a two pounder. As excited as I was about catching such a small fish. But there you go. Um, I thought it was going to blank again today. I was just like, can't be happening. Four times in a month. Um, or four times out this month. And all I got to show for it was one two pounder. Now I've got two two pounders. There you go. <laughs> guys that's it as always i hope you enjoyed the vlog and uh thanks for your support thanks for watching do give us a like subscribe and hit that bell to get the notifications uh when i do an upload um until the next one we'll see you on the bank at some stage until then tight lines